This is a video tutorial on how to create a response to the artist Louis Hauvert and I'm going to show you how to do that digitally with Photopia.com which is an alternative to Photoshop but you could do this in edi any editing app. So the first thing you want to do is to get an image loaded up into Photopia and then you want to make the canvas a little bit bigger so that you have space around the, the portrait to edit. Then you want to have the portrait towards the bottom just so you've got space around it. And then you're going to delete the background of the portrait. Or alternatively, you could make the portrait background if it's quite plain, make that fill the space fill the canvas space around it. So I'm not going to do that, I'm going to delete the background so I can add in my own. So I go to the polygon selection tool and then you need to select different points around the portrait the more that you use the better because the more accurate shape you are selecting and you do that all the way around the portrait Then you want to make sure that you are selecting outside of the portrait and connecting it at the bottom. This is really important. And then when you get towards the end, you want to join your lines up by double clicking both ends together and your selection will be made. So then you can see the selections been made by the ants and then what I'm going to go to is select an inverse and that selects everything except what you've just selected and then you want to press delete to get rid of the background. Then you want to go to um, filter and uh, then add in a blur and that just blurs the selection around the edge um, to make it a little bit softer. Then go to layer, new layer and fill in the background with a colour of your choice using the brush tool and because this is on a new layer it will be separate to the image so then you just want to send the colour backwards and it brings the image forwards. Then I'm going to reselect the image layer, go to image adjustments and black and white and click OK. And then maybe just adjust the contrast a little bit to how Louis Hauvert would have it or however you would like it. It's good to test out the extremes to see what you're working with and then get the selection that you like. Then you want to separate the face into two sections because that is what Louis Hauvert does and move that slightly away from the bottom half. Then select a circular area around the eye because that is typical of the style. And then you want to get rid of the other section of the face on the right hand side. And delete that. Then what I did to make it easier for myself for to arrange the composition is I separated all of the different sections of the portrait and moved them onto their own layers. So you do that by selecting um, the image and 
cutting it and pasting it onto a new layer. In this section, I'm just experimenting with selecting um, part of the hair. Now I'm going to add in some shapes using the ellipse tool. And I'm going to use the bucket tool, which is hidden in the gradient tool. I'm making sure each time I make a new shape, I make a new layer so that if I want to move it later on, it doesn't move something else along with it. So if you press and hold on the gradient tool, you will find the bucket tool. And then you're going to choose whichever color you want to fill it with and then just select the area that you want to fill. And then you're going to repeat that process with different shapes to fill your composition. And sometimes you might want to keep it on the same layer or you might want to have everything on a different layer so that you can move each section individually. And then if the circles and the colours go in front of the, um, the portrait, then you can just move those behind by moving the layer down. So now I'm going to add in some lines. So if you use the pencil tool, select a new layer, layer. So now I'm going to add in some lines. So what I'm going to do is to use the pencil tool. Make sure you're on a new layer and draw in some lines by clicking and holding shift and it will create a straight line for you and if you make sure that the lines connect outside of the canvas or of the piece of paper uh, however you want to imagine it then it, when you go to use the fill bucket tool then you can fill in those shapes that you have made If you click and continue to hold when you click on the second time, so if you click where you want the line to start, click where you want the line to finish and continue holding and then drag it, you can make a curved line. And then you can edit whether you want the line to be a filled in line or whether you want it to be a dash line with the settings at the top. And then continue to add those in or experiment with where you want those to go within your composition. Then what I'm doing is just looking up for more inspiration of how to fill the portrait. So I see that um, Lou Herbert uses flowers and um, paint splashes 
things like that in her background so what I've done prior to making this video is gone in and saved some images like that I'm just going to open those into my document so flowers and paint splashes and those will open as new tabs and they will have white backgrounds on them so what I want to do is to delete, to delete those backgrounds so what I've done there is gone to select colour range clicked on the white area and press delete then I'm going to drag that paint splash into my document and arrange it however I like and again the same select colour range click on the white area click OK and click delete and again drag that into my image and repeat the process for any other images that I have. Or what you can do is go to the quick selection tool, select on the flower that you want. And paste it into the document on a new layer. So I'm just using the uh, keystroke control C for copy and then control V for paste. So all I did there was add in the flower, so it was behind the eye, but in front of the um, the orange stripes, and then just cut away part of the flower using the polygon selection tool. And then now what I'm going to do is fill a space with green, but making sure that it is on 75% opacity, which means it will come out a little bit paler. And if that circle was to be in front of something, then it would um, appear slightly transparent. Then you want to save it, so you go to File, Export As, make sure the quality is at the highest it can go, and then click OK, and that will save that as a, an image file. And then you're done. Basically, you want to experiment and see what kinds of images you can make. The stronger your response, um, so how to make a strong response would be to choose a celebrity or do yourself and then include imagery in the background that relates to them. So instead of generic flowers or paint splashes, you might include a film strip for a film star. Um, or you might include, say you included a famous artist, you might include paintbrushes or something like that, um, just to make your image and the connection between your images a little bit stronger. But basically you want to experiment with the technique first, um, and then as you become more confident, then you can swap and change things out in your layers potentially um, to develop your image further. 